if we were to multiply all these factors together, we would find 100 billion times a tenth times a tenth, or one billion planets on which civilizations have arisen at least once. Now, what percentage of the lifetime of a planet is marked by a technical civilization? The Earth has harbored a civilization capable of radio astronomy only for a few decades, the last few decades, out of a lifetime of a few billion years. It's hardly out of the question that we might destroy ourselves tomorrow. If that's a typical case, then F sub big L would be a few decades divided by a few billion years or one hundred millionth, a very small number. And then big N would be a billion times a hundred millionth or N maybe just 10, 10 civilizations, a tiny smattering, a pitiful few technological civilizations in the galaxy. But civilizations then might take billions of years of tortuous evolution to arise and then snuff themselves out in an instant of unforgivable neglect. If this is a typical case, there may be few others, maybe nobody else at all, for us to talk to. But consider the alternative that occasionally civilizations learn to live with high technology and survive for geological or stellar evolutionary timescales. If only 1% of civilizations can survive technological adolescence, then F sub big L would be not a hundred millionth, but only a hundredth. And then the number of civilizations would be a billion times a hundred. The number of civilizations in the galaxy then would be measured in the millions. Millions of technical civilizations. So if civilizations do not always destroy themselves shortly after discovering radio astronomy, then the sky may be softly humming with messages from the stars with signals from civilizations enormously older and wiser than we. If there are millions of technical civilizations in the Milky Way, each capable of radio astronomy, how far away is the nearest one? If they're distributed more or less randomly through space, then the nearest one will be some 200 light years away. But within 200 light years, there are hundreds of thousands of stars. To find the needle in this haystack requires a dedicated and systematic search. There are many cosmic radio sources having nothing to do with intelligent life. So how would we know that we were receiving a message? The transmitting civilization could make it very easy for us, if they wished. Imagine we're in the course of a systematic search, or in the midst of some more conventional radio observations. And suppose one day, we find a strong signal slowly emerging, not just some background hiss, but a methodical series of pulses. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, a signal made of prime numbers, numbers divisible only by one and themselves. There is no natural astrophysical process that generates prime numbers. We would have to conclude that someone fond of elementary mathematics was saying hello. This would be no more than a beacon to attract our attention. The main message will be subtler, more hidden, far richer. We may have to work hard to find it. But the beacon signal alone would be profoundly significant. 
it would mean that someone has learned to survive technological adolescence, that self-destruction is not inevitable, that we also may have a future. Such knowledge, it seems to me, might be worth a great price. Very likely, some new Champollion would go on to decode the main message, using our interstellar Rosetta Stone, the common language of science and mathematics. Think of the glories of an exotic civilization far more advanced than we, collected by the great radio telescopes of Earth. Perhaps they would send a compilation of the knowledge of a million inhabited worlds, the Encyclopedia Galactica. The receipt of an interstellar message would be one of the major events in human history and the beginning of the deprovincialization of our planet. A serious and systematic radio search for extraterrestrial civilizations may come soon. Preliminary steps are being taken both in the United States and in the Soviet Union. It's comparatively inexpensive. A search taking decades would cost less than the budget overruns on a single modest weapons system in a single year. Our technology is now fully adequate for this great challenge, but no systematic search program has ever been approved by any nation on Earth. When will we decide to search for what other civilizations there may be in the vast cosmic ocean? But whether there are only a few advanced galactic civilizations or millions, shouldn't some of them have voyaged to Earth? On the one hand, we've argued that if even a small fraction of technical civilizations learn to live with themselves and their potential for self-destruction, then there should by now be enormous numbers of them in the galaxy. On the other hand, despite claims about UFOs and ancient astronauts, there's no credible evidence that the Earth has been visited now or ever. But isn't this a contradiction? If the nearest civilization is, say, uh, 200 light years away, it would take them only 200 years to get from there to here at the speed of light. Even if they were traveling a thousand times slower than that, beings from a nearby civilization could have come here during the tenure of human beings on the Earth. So why aren't they here? There's many possible answers. One is that maybe we're the first. Some technical civilization has to be first to emerge in the history of the galaxy. Or maybe all technical civilizations promptly destroy themselves. That seems to me very unlikely. Or maybe there's some problem with interstellar spaceflight that we've been too dumb to figure out. Or maybe they are here, but uh, in hiding because of some ethic of non-interference with emerging civilizations. We might imagine them curious and dispassionate, watching us to determine whether this year again we managed to avoid self-destruction. But there's another explanation which is consistent with everything else we know, and that's that it's a big cosmos. If a great many years ago an advanced interstellar spacefaring civilization emerged 200 light years away, why would they come here? They would have no reason to think there was something special about the Earth. There are no signs of human technology, not even our radio transmissions which uh, have had time to go 200 light years. From their point of view, all nearby planetary systems might seem equally attractive for exploration. How would an interstellar civilization set out to explore its neighboring star system? 